back to another EEC Talks. I'm your host, Mr. C. Well, for starters, I would like to thank you all who have been sticking by me for the past almost two weeks since I last posted my first podcast. I will explain that I have not had much free time to really make a podcast or I've just been way too tired and I like appreciate you guys for, you know, being patient. But on to the podcast. Today we're going to have a talk about a couple of topics I've been through my entire life. First one, hospital experience. Like most people, not everybody's a big fan of the, you know, the hospital, the big H, the the big cross, and we all know what that means. We're not going to have an easy day. Now, you may wonder why I say that. Well, because I didn't have the best hospital experience. Because, for starters, as a kid, I guess I somehow uh, got asthma. And I got really sick to the point where I had to go to the children's hospital. Where, like in Oakland? Yeah, it was Oakland. So, I had to go to the children's hospital in Oakland. And do, like... I had a freaking needle up my arm, well, actually up my uh, hand, and it was going to be there for like a good week. So, you know, they only change out fluids, but I would have that freaking needle for like a good seven days. So this is what happened. Um, Originally, when I got there, I thought it was going to be like an in and out kind of trip because I didn't know that I was going to be staying there overnight because I didn't know how serious it was back then. Because, you know, I'm little. I just want to go home and watch TV. But life threw me a good old curveball. So we go there. I get, you know, uh, medicine and stuff. Next thing you know, I'm sitting on a table. Or they put me like on a chair or whatever and it leans all the way back to where a point where I'm laying down. They got my right hand and you know they stick a needle in there. But you know they did it try it calmly as possible. But imagine a, two, um, a second grader kid, Mr. C, is receiving needles. And the biggest fear of Mr. C's life up to this day is needles. I you know I'll tolerate it but I freaking hate needles. So... They stick the needle in me. I scream. I cry. I want to go home. I, I told my mom. I'm like, Mom, can we get pizza after this? And, you know, I'm assuming that it's just like they're just giving me a shot so I could go home. But no. It's like, oh, you're going to spend the night, by the way. I'm like, what? <laughs> so, you know, I go in, you know, in my little ro- in my a room. I share with other kids. I lay down. I get, you know, a needle put up in me. And I'm just like. Uh, this is terrible. I'm laying there. I can't really like move my ar- my right arm because it's like there's a cast and stuff on it. So I'm kind of like, you know, stuck there. And wherever that freaking HIV, HIV, that IV goes has, has come with me. So wherever I go, it goes. And I remember at one point, I guess my breathing wasn't doing too well, so they put up, like, these little air tubes up my nose, like, you know, those little breathing uh, oxygen. So I guess oxygen will go into my body so I don't have to breathe too much on my own because I would have to inhale, like, over and over and over. I mean, breathing nowadays is, you know, easy, but back then it was just a little harder for me because of my asthma. Because I guess I had an asthma attack and it didn't go too well. So, you know, I went to the ER and all that happened. So I'm there for like, it feels like an eternity. And at one point they're like, um, I guess my family come and visit and some stay with me, some don't. Some go home so they can recoup and then come back the next night or whatever. So I remember one night, I mean one day, um, they allowed us, allowed me to, you know, uh, they unhooked me from the IV, but I had to have the needle in still. So I was like, fine, fine, I'll have it, but I'm allowed to move around. So I remember going, uh, I was able to go to a computer lab. So I go there, you know, I'm kind of like, this is the most exciting thing ever. Like, you know, I can finally play something. I can, you know, do something that's not boring besides watching TV. Because I was getting bored of TV and I had nothing to do. 
But, you know, I go there, I meet some other kids, they're all, they're sick too, and, you know, we're all, like, interacting, we're all talking. And then I remember that that day, we also went to, um, what's it called? Arts and Crafts. That was fun. I never found my star. I, I painted a star, and I never got that back. I was so sad when I left the hospital without it. But I'm getting ahead of myself. So, after all that nonsense... I go back to my room, um, you know, I'm resting or whatever, and I remember my brother and sister finally come visit me. My little brother is autistic, so he has autism. So he doesn't really understand what the whole thing's going on. I mean, he can talk. He gets, he's very sensitive, so I try not to, like, overwhelm him. But, you know, that kid is very smart. He's a smart kid, I'll give you that. And then my little, my baby sister, it was in a stroller, but, you know, she could walk. She brought me my blanket because she knows, that, well, I guess they knew I wanted my blanket because I'm in a hospital and I was, I was depressed. So I get a blanket and, you know, I'm kind of like all happy. I see my uncle, I see my mom, I see my dad. I'm kind of like, this is great. Everyone's here. Does that mean I get to go home? And then I was told, oh, no, we're just here to visit you. You know, we wanted to come see you and how you're doing. I'm like, ah, man, I don't get to leave. I remember at one point my mom wanted me to, like, eat breakfast. Like, one, uh, like a day after she stayed the night with me. And... I guess I was uh, eating my br- breakfast to the point where I was full, and my mom was assuming I was lying because you know I don't I I don't eat that much. I mean I eat a lot, but you know I didn't eat that much because I guess the IV was kind of like keeping me full. Or she's like, "Oh no no, you gotta eat more." I know you're lying, and I'm just like, "Mom, I'm full," so I ate more to the point where I vomited. My mom looked at me in horror, and she's like, "Oh my god, I'm so sorry," and I was like, "Yeah, me too." You know, I get cleaned up. I get a new hospital gown. God, I felt like I was wearing a freaking dress. It was terrible. But after that, um, I remember my dad coming to see me. But I did not. I did not want him to see me like hooked up to the oxygen thing, with a needle in my arm and looked like it look looking like a sick person because I looked weak. Because to me, my dad was a very tough guy and I wanted to like be like him at that time and be tough just like him so I didn't want to seem weak because I told my mom I was like I don't want him to see me like this I don't want to I don't want to humiliate myself in front of my father my my guy my hero but you know eventually he came and saw me and he brought me and you know I saw him I was kind of happy I remember one night that, uh, okay, I don't know if you guys know the show, but it's called SpongeBob, uh, SpongeBob SquarePants. Well, that's the guy. That's the guy's name, but SpongeBob was on, and I remember the episode where Gary uh, ran away from home, and I remember that night because that's like, whenever I watch that episode at home, I always think about the night I spent in the hospital. So you know, it brought back memories, good and bad. But, you know, I always think about it whenever I see that episode. Or the episode where another show called Ed and Eddie. Ed, Ed and Eddie. God, I love that show so much. But I remember that that episode was the one that came out. It was about the blackout. You know how the whole cul-de-sac is all blacked out and, you know. Everyone's freaking out. Everyone thinks that it's like a sewer monster or something. And oh my god, I remember watching that. And I remember I was eating something really delicious that I cannot recall up to this day. But I'm so sad because it was so good. Even though I don't remember what it was. But anywho. So I remember one night, um, I guess my one of my uncles stayed with me. And I, I don't know why, but subcon- subconsciously, I took off the tape... Of the you know, you know my my little um, my little what you call it. Well, okay, there was a platform under my arm that was you know keeping the tape together and keeping the ne- needle there, but I remember I subconsciously took it off, but I was asleep, so I did it in my sleep. And next thing you know, it, I wake up and then I see the needles all hanging out and then blood's all over the place and I'm like freaking out and I'm like oh my god I'm screaming I'm like ah. My uncle wakes up all screaming. I mean, my uncle wakes up all freaked out, looking at me like, oh, my God. And then, you know, my hands all like, you know, pss, blood everywhere. 
And, oh, my God, that was crazy. To the point where, you know, the nurses come running in. They, you know, control the bleeding. After that, they took me uh, to a doctor's office where he would re put in the needle. But it was just me and him. And I didn't freak out because I was so used to the needle in my arm. And, you know, he hooked me up to the needle once again. After all of that nonsense, um, I was able to go back to my room and I couldn't sleep. So, you know, I was just there watching TV until I guess a nurse comes and gives me... Uh, she puts, I guess she gave me a sedative or some sort to put me to sleep because all I see is her and then she like puts something in, you know, in my needle and then it just goes in and after that I'm, next thing you know, I'm, I'm out like a light, light bulb. So, you know, I'm kind of like, <sighs> feeling like this is never ending, you know, the hospital, the kids are cool but some leave and some are really sick so I feel bad and we talked you know I met a couple kids here and there and I was supposed to go back to school that week but I was in the hospital so I couldn't go back to school at all so I was kind of you know mad about it but then it kind of happened I'm like oh great now I don't have to go to school I could yeah I could chill here I can not go to school for a while I'm good but you know I was missing home I was getting a little depressed I was like I want to go home I remember I had to change, like, you know, I had to change my gown or clothes or something because I didn't, and my, like, my uncles and my dad were there and my mom, and I was like, can I not do this with them around? She's like, why? And I was like, mom, embarrassment, please. So my mom helps me change or whatever. I put on, I guess, a different gown. But I remember this, like, the rest of the days, they were kind of ordinary, you know, I just do my hospital thing. I remember a family friend from church came over and, you know, they were praying for me. They started, like, singing a song to me with a guitar and it was kind of cool. I mean, people were concerned if I was going to be okay or not. But, I mean, it was an asthma attack, so who knows? It could have been so much worse. Anywho, after that, I remember um, the day I left, I got discharged, finally, from the hospital. Um... The ner- the ner- no, the doctor comes and sees me. They're like, okay, everything's good. He's check- He's ready to get checked out. The only thing I was concerned about was the freaking needle. Because that thing was in my arm for almost seven days straight. So I was like, ah. They looked at me and they're like, hey, you ready to let- get-, get this off? I'm like, is it going to like bleed again? Because I was so paranoid. I was like, not ready. I was like... If you take this thing out and blood comes out again, I'm going to lose my mind. And then I'm a freaking cry. But, you know, the doctor's reassuring me that everything's fine. You know, I'm going to take it out this time. You will not. And I was like, just get it over with, doc. I pull, I put my hand up to him and I'm just like, just do it. So he takes it, he, you know, I didn't realize what happened to my hand afterward until, uh, during all that time until after, you know, he takes the needle out and, you know, the little thing that was under my arm to keep everything in, you know, keep everything together. So when I look at my hand, oh my god, like, my hand was pudgy, like, it was thick. Like, I could not make a fist. And I and they're like, oh, that's because we've been putting so much fluid, in, fluid into you through your hand that your hand got really big. So I'm like, is this permanent? They're like, no, no, the, it'll come out, like, when I, whenever I try to make a fist with my hand... Like, it looked like water was, like, slightly come like, making a bubble at the hole where the needle was, and it was slightly coming out, but, like, little by little. So, you know, I'm kind of, like, trying to make a fist, and I'm kind of like, okay, that's fine. I can, I can live with this for a bit, thinking that, you know, my hand's going to come back. But, you know, after, of course, after all that, I'm kind of like, I'm outside the hospital. I'm like, I'm going home. I'm out of here. I don't remember who picked, I don't know I don't remember who took me home but I think it was my mom but she said hey let's get you a burrito or a taco for your for being so brave and I'm like yes a reward I like that so she takes me to a bur- taco truck I get I get a burrito or a taco nowadays I eat burritos but I guess I eat tacos because I did love tacos I do love tacos to this day so if you ever send me tacos uh, my subscribers and followers. I would be indebted to you. Just don't poison me. Anywho, uh, I get my taco. I'm in a great mood. I'm great. It's like everything's getting better for me until I get home. And then I see the house is like spotless. Like the windows is all, there's no dust 
anywhere. Nothing around the house. Because I remember before the hospital, my mom would put this, um, they gave me this mask. And it would, like, you know, try to produce good and quality air for me so I could breathe because, you know, my breathing wasn't well. But, you know, the house smelled good and then everybody sees me. My mom, no, my brother, my sister, my uncle are all there. They all run up and hug me. They're like, welcome home. And I'm kind of, my sister's like, you know, I think like four to five. And she was like happy to see me. So I was kind of like, yes, no more of this stupid nonsense. I think she was three, actually. My sister was three when this happened. My brother just sees me and he's all happy. So I'm thinking, okay, I think all my doctor visits and all that nonsense is over. Wrong. So I was... Um, this was probably before I went back to school, but I remember going to a bunch of different doctor visits, and I remember at one point that, um, what was it? I had to go do a lot of testing, I had to go, uh, make sure I was healthy, I had to, like, take this weird, I had an inhaler for the longest, I had to take this weird purple round thing where I would have to, like, suck in the air from it, I guess, because it had medicine, I'll go like, and then, like, you know, in and out. Not in and out the burger. I mean, sponsor me. That'd be awesome. But no. Um, yeah. But I had to, like, go in and out of that so my breathing can, uh, I guess, get better to the point where it, and it eventually did get better. But then, you know, uh, all the visits, the booster shots. Booster shots are not that bad. They actually, it was just like a pinch. Instead of, like, an actual needle, it's like a booster. I'm like a boom. I was like, I love booster shots. They're easy. Never going back to needles. But after all that nonsense, eventually I got to, you know, go back to school. And now we're going to go into the next se- segment of this. Um, I would say Disneyland, but that would not make sense. So let's go to my childhood and childhood and schools. And then after that, Disneyland and then my pet peeves. So, childhood. Okay, uh, before I tell you guys about school, um, as a kid growing up, I would move around a lot because I guess landlords didn't like us or my dad would do something stupid to get us kicked out. So we'd be moving a lot and I would always be that new kid every year for, for I would say, a good three three to four years. I would change uh, from kindergarten to a different kinder. No, I finished kindergarten in the same school. First grade, I went to a private school for a year. Didn't like it. Second grade, I went to a school for about a good quarter of the year. But then after that, I moved to the one I finished everything at. And that's where I met most of my childhood friends up to now. But yeah, that was the case. Uh, Moving a lot was kind of hard. Couldn't really make friends. And I was very, very antisocial, even back then. But it's fine. I'm doing better now. But here, okay, um, after the hospital, after all the medicine, medication stuff, I remember uh, coming into my second grade class, you know, my sec, you know, literally the second school I went to for second grade. Get it? Second, second grade. Ha 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 puns. No. Okay, great. But after all that, I would enter the room and I, the teacher would meet me. She's like, oh, hello, my name is so and so. I'm like, oh, hi, I'm so and so. And, you know, introduction complete. The class was out in recess. So I was kind of like, oh, wait, everybody's out already. I'm alone in the room. She's like, yeah. But, you know, my mom's with me. She's like, okay, well, I'll drop you off here. You're going to be okay. I'll see you after school. I'm like, great. So I get dropped off and a teacher and I are just like talking. And then, you know, recess is over. Kids are coming back. She's like, okay, you're going to sit over here. And I was like, oh, okay. So I'm kind of like nervous and a little shy. And then everybody comes into class. Everybody knows each other until they're like, oh, it's a new kid. I'm like, ah, hi. So, you know, I met, I get, I met some people who I would eventually call my friends. And eventually they were like on Wednesdays play Yu-Gi-Oh! Because I guess show and tell is the time where you get to bring stuff. And man, those were the days. But yeah, Yu-Gi-Oh! Was, the big, was a big thing back then. I don't know if you could still play it. Probably not as much. You know, it was big for us kids back then. Oh, Lord. It feels like forever since that happened. Over t- about, I would say about a good 10, 10 years now. It's been 10, 10, 10 to 12 years now since that happened. 
best time of my life. Sidetrack, yeah. Um, I remember I would talk or I would get jealous because I would want to play Yu-Gi-Oh, but I never had Yu-Gi-Oh cards. So I would look at my dad and I'm like, Dad, you got to buy me some Yu-Gi-Oh cards. I got to play with the kids. Those are my friends and I want to hang out with them. Eventually, I remember that one time I came and, you know, I brought something for show and tell and it was cool, I guess. Or whatever. And the guys looked at me, they're like, oh, you want to play? I was like, I don't have any cards. Kid you not, a bunch of them had a bunch of Yu-Gi-Oh cards and they're like, oh, we'll just split up our decks and we'll just share it with you and we'll all play. After that, I became friends with them forever. Even up to now, I know them as my good friends. Will I tell you their names? No, I won't. But I'll tell you that out of five of them, I still stay in contact with two of them. And those were my childhood friends up to this day. All right. Um, what else should I talk about? Um, I told you guys about the hospital experience. I told you guys about my childhood. I told you, well, a little bit of it. I'm not going to tell you all of it all at once because I'll be stupid. I told you about school. It was okay. I just want to tell you guys a little bit about elementary school a little bit more. Like, uh, second grade was cool. Third grade, it was okay. I make mistakes. I get in trouble. I do stupid things. I remember I lied to my mom about, oh, copy machine not working. No homework, no assignments for the week. Yeah, that's how, how that happened. My mom was not happy when she found out I lied. And then my uncle had a whole whole conversation with me. I was breaking down, I was crying, I was being a little, you know, I was being a weakling. Uh, fourth grade, I moved to a house right next to my house, actually, because I lived in an apartment, and then the house right next to us was, you know, available for rent, so my mom went over, and I knew the landlord ahead of time, because she was cool, and I would talk to her, and eventually, I guess she liked me and my family enough for, to let us move in, so we moved in here. Been living here ever since, and, you know, great place. Uh, fifth grade, it was cool. Um, my year, my yearbook picture for that, I hated it. Hated it so much. It was so bad. Like, I hate that picture. Like, I look like a clown with an orange t-shirt. Ooh, no, I wasn't even wearing a t-shirt. I was wearing a freaking, like, um, like a polo, like a polo uh, orange shirt. But it was a button-up shirt, actually. A button-up shirt. And, oh, my God, it was so bad. And I had glasses at that time. So it was, not a, it was not a great time. I looked like a freaking nerd. I looked like a geek. I still do, but come on. Give me some credit. All right, uh, sixth grade. I was starting to get my act together a little by little. Seventh grade, I can improve. I mean, I always thought I, thought I was high and mighty. Eighth grade, no, seventh grade was when I got my first crush. I remember that, but I won't talk about my crush or love life for a while until then. So, sorry guys. Not going to happen. Um, what else? Eighth grade was okay. Graduation was cool. I met some friends. I liked some girls, of course, but not, never uh, persuade. or su- never, I never persuaded any of them to talk to me or anything. I was very, very shy. And I, I'm still pretty shy to this day. I don't know how any of this is possible, but here we are. Um, I guess that'll be it. I'll leave high school stuff for the next one because I feel like some of you are in high school and you want to hear some advice I have to say about high school. But that's not this podcast. That'll be the next one, most likely, or a couple ones from now. Okay, uh, let's talk about Disneyland. Oh, man, I love Disneyland. Like, oh, my God, it's the most magical place on Earth. Like, oh, my God, I love Disneyland. <laughs> Okay, uh, I remember my first trip to Disneyland was with my family, like my mom, my dad, brother, sister, cousins. I remember uh, my cousin's wife was pregnant with my soon-to-be cousin, who I am familiar with, like, freaking love my little cousin to pieces, even though he's an idiot nowadays, but still love him. But, you know, I I don't remember much of it. I guess we did also go to uh, Universal Studios, but I don't remember that. All I do is remember that we just did a lot of stuff. That was fun. I don't think I went on roller coasters because I wasn't that big of a fan back then because I would get scared easily. But, you know, I'm a kid. What do you expect me to do? What else? Um, Honestly, I remember wearing the Mickey Mouse hat and freaking loved that hat. I mean, that's my hat, bro. That's my freaking hat. Like, the one with the big old um, wizard hat and the mouse ears. Oh, my God. I love that hat with the passion. I would buy that hat forever. 
but not today, because uh, I've, I've done that too many times. <laughs> All right, what else? Um, I would say that I don't remember much afterward. I mean, I remember the trip, and it took us forever to get there. I remember, I remember meeting Mickey and Minnie and got them to sign my book. I mean, signing books is like the most amazing thing ever, but you know, you get what I mean. What else? Um, that was it for that one. Uh, the next one I do recall more was in 2013. I would say I was a freshman in high school by then. But my uh, we went to L.A. to meet up with my uncle. Or no, I was told we were going to San Diego. And I was lied to. But my mom, my best friend was told ahead of time that we were actually going to see my uncle. So I was kind of like, oh shoot, never mind. I know where we're going. But I acted dumb the whole way there. It was fine. But after all that nonsense, it was it was funny because my mom was like, oh, how do we get here and here or this and this? And then freaking we were her GPS to everywhere until we met up with my uncle at the hotel. When we ran into him, I acted surprised like, oh, my God, we're going to Disneyland Universal Studios. <sighs> Pinch me. I was just kidding. Pinch me. But, you know, I learned I learned that. Oh. <sighs> My acting skills are not good. I apologize, guys. I'm a little, I'm a little sleepy, but I'm a little tired as well. But I'm awake, and it's only like ten o'clock in the morning. I think after this talk, I'm probably gonna get some food because I am so hungry. But you guys, are imp- you guys are important, so I'm gonna talk a little longer. Cause, I mean, come on, guys, you wouldn't want to hear me talk all day. I mean, I'm Mr. C. Come on. But, anywho. So, we go to Disneyland. Um, I remember we went to breakfast first. And my friend, I have a picture of my friend to this day he hates. It was back when he was chubbier. And, oh my god. He did not love that picture at all. It was so funny. I kept it to this day. Whenever he looks back at it, he's like, why? And I was like, I love you too, bud. Anywho. After all that nonsense, uh, we went to Disneyland. Uh, we had a great time. We went on so many rides. We went to places. We went to freaking uh, Toontown. I wanted to go there because I wanted to ride Roger Rabbit. I freaking love Roger Rabbit. Like, as a kid, I would, like, whenever I, I rode that ride, I would, like, do it with my mom. And we would spin around and go crazy or stuff. Or, you know, it's always a long line, but it was so worth it. So after all that, um, I remember us um, going, I don't remember how many rides we went on, but I remember I remember we went to Space Mountain. That became my most favorite ride to go on because that's freaking in the dark roller coaster. I mean, you can't beat that in the dark roller coaster. It's freaking fun. But, you know, I go and do that. I did the... Um, I did the Star Wars, um, Star Wars tour where, you know, Star Tour. I did that. Star Tour was fun. I don't remember if I went on any roller coasters, but I can tell you my most recent trips. I did stuff, but I don't remember this one. Uh, we did not go to California Adventures, but because I don't know why. I guess we didn't really want to go and we were kind of on time. We were pressing on time, I guess, or something. So we go do a lot of stuff. Um, I bought another Mickey Mouse hat because, oh, my God, I had to. My friend got a Goofy hat. My little sister got uh, a mini, a wedding mini Mouse hat. No, Minnie Mouse ears. My brother got the original Mickey Mouse ears, like the, like the ones you wear on your head. It has, like, the uh, shape of your head, and then it has mouse ears. Those are cool. Uh, I remember we went to see the fireworks show, and oh my god, I felt like a kid again. I thought the, you know, the, when you wish upon a star, and I don't remember the rest of the song. Or, you know what I mean. Or that vine saying, never mind, I'm not going to bring up a vine, actually. That was stupid. <clears throat> but anywho, uh, after that Disney trip, I wanted to go to Disneyland again, but I haven't gone to Disneyland for like a good another five years. So in 2020, no, that was four years then. So in 2017, my best friend and I planned to go to Disneyland because we wanted to go out and do stuff. So eventually in 2017, we went out and we went to Disneyland. 
And, you know, it was just me and him. We took Uber there. You know, we flew to LAX and then we took Uber over to Anaheim like two days later. And, you know, we had a great time at Disneyland. We did the two-day park hopper pass where we get to go to California Adventures and Disneyland. So we went and did that, and oh my god, we had a great time. We went on the Incredible Coaster, before it was called the Incredible Coaster, Space Mountain. Um, I remember we went on a lot of rides, honestly, and it was on New Year's Eve was the last day. And I remember seeing, like, the giant clock and, you know, counting down until New Year's, and I was kind of like, whoa, that's insane. But then I did not want to be there for New Year's uh, Eve, because, I mean, New Year's Day, or till midnight because then getting out was going to be a freaking pain but you know we did all that we went on millions of rides i remember um i think my friend almost lost his hat but no 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 that was my that was the following trip actually no no that was my most recent trip trip my most recent recent trip i apologize if my speaking is not that great like i told you guys before i'm working on it so you know i'm improving little by little trying to make sense and not get you guys confused but i appreciate you guys for listening up till now back to this so disneyland oh magical place on earth uh we went on a bunch of rides um i wanted to go to um i wanted to go to the haunted mansion but we never did that i don't know why because i think it was too long I think we went on Indiana Jones, but probably not. Pirates of the Caribbean. Oh my God, we had to, we had to do that one. Like we went to do that before we went back to the hotel because he's like, we gotta at least do that before we go back. And I was like, fine, but I love that ride, so I was kind of like, secretly, okay, let's do it. I'm down for it. So we go and ride it, and you know, the yo ho yo ho, a pirate's life for me. That was fun. I will admit that I had a great time doing that ride. But, you know, I got to pace myself on how many rides I can do because I'm exhausted. So after that, uh, back to the hotel. Then day after, back to Disneyland and California Adventures. I went on Guardians of the Galaxy. I was freaking nervous. But it was so worth it because it was heck of fun. Even though I freaking screamed and my crotch did not feel comfortable because it felt weird. Because it's going up and down, and that did not feel nice around the where the sun don't shine. And I remember him laughing at me, and then I remember us going on Space Mountain because I wanted to go back on Space Mountain. What I didn't know was it was Star Wars theme that year because I guess the the Last Jedi came out, so I guess they did a little theme park for that. So you know that was cool. We were seeing you know Star Wars stuff going all over the place, and oh, it was magical. And I think a year before our trip with me and him, I did go with a group of friends. Like, it was like a little club. We went to Disneyland for a day. That was fun. I remember I I went on Splash Mountain. Oh, my God. I did not know what I was expecting, but I was soaking wet. And in front of us, my friend, um, she was wearing mascara, and she was the one in front. Next thing you know, it her mascara was, like, running because she looked like freaking Jack Sparrow. I kid you not, because we all looked at her and we're like, oh my god. Like, she's like, what? And then we all looked, we all told her to look at herself, and oh my god, it was hilarious. Like, I was freaking dying on the floor. And she was like, heck of mad. And then we did go on the Winnie the Pooh ride. That was cool. It was really weird, honestly. And then she forced us to go to um, It's a Small World. I'm going to be honest with you guys. I hate Small World. It's a small world that sucks because, one, it's creepy, and two, they have Moana, but it was okay. But then I didn't like it because it was just weird. Or maybe I was thinking of someone else. Maybe Moana. I think. I don't remember. But I did not like it. Like, it was creepy. Like, why would you ever do that to me? That was the creepiest thing in my entire life I've ever seen. But never going back to that right anytime soon against my own will. Unless my girlfriend forces me, then I will never go. God, I can't do it. I got to be given a reward to go through that again. What else? Um, Small world. Um, I did. No, I didn't go. Hmm. I'll be honest with you guys. I don't remember all the rides. Like, of course, in the moment, you're going to enjoy it. And you're not going to remember everything. Uh, We stayed for this. I don't think we stayed for the fireworks because we all had a curfew to go back to the hotel because we were on a schedule. So I guess we all went back and, you know, ate food. 
uh, did stuff, got food, and you know, went back to the hotel, relaxed, chilled. And I, we went out Indiana Jones before we left. I remember that. But my friend pissed me off, so I shut my mouth the whole way home, and, uh, all the way back to the hotel. And he looked at me. He's like, "Please talk to me." I was like, "Fine, I'll talk." But yeah, Indiana Jones was heck of fun. I want to go do that right again this year because I'm gonna go back again in April with some friends. So you know, kind of looking forward to that. Uh, what else do I have that I haven't told you? I uh, went on that ride, Disneyland. I would love to tell you more about my Disneyland trips, but I'm kind of like a little eh, tired. So, you know, uh, what are my pet peeves? What are my pet peeves? I mean, I don't have pet peeves uh, that bad. I mean, hmm. I really had to think about it because I wanted to give you guys something else, a little more intro about me, like pet peeves. Um, I don't like a messy house, even though I live in one, but my siblings make it a mess, so I always try to clean up most of the time. Um, what else? I hate dirty socks. I need them clean. I can't do it. I mean, my socks are dirty at times, but I need them to be clean. Um, stains. I hate stain. I hate wearing a white shirt and it getting stained. That pisses me off. Like, it's, that's, that's a problem. What else? Um... I need to hear music once a day is the thing. I mean, that's pretty normal, but I like music. My best friend is obsessed with music because apparently it saved his life at one point. So I'm kind of like, okay, I might got to take it to that point, but good to know. Uh, what else? Um, I hate being interrupted more than anything. Because when someone, when I say something and someone interrupts me or talks over me, oh, that pisses me off. Like, I'm going to want to freaking give them a right hook and freaking knock them out for just interrupting me. Because I have precious time and information to, you know, give to people. Or I hate people who change their minds at the last minute or people who do things at the very last minute. Because that pisses me off. Because I'm like, I had this ready in advance. I am, like, you know, ahead of the game. I don't want to be told, like, last minute stuff. Because that pisses me off more than anything. Because I remember, um, I guess I went, okay. So I went to Disneyland last year in December. And, you know, we had a whole plan about when we were going. Eventually, uh, I had a friend who, you know, was going to go. But he couldn't buy a ticket. So, you know, they were offering to buy me a ticket. But I was like, give it to him. And then I'll buy my own ticket. So I bought my own ticket or whatever. And then, you know, as the others were, like, getting ready to leave. And he's like, oh, I can't go, actually. And I hear that, and that's a week before, and I bought my ticket. So I'm kind of like, are you freaking kidding me? I bought my ticket for nothing? So I have an extra Disneyland ticket to go for this year. So, you know, I'm like, it's fine. But I was kind of pissed off because I'm like, you could have told us this a month in advance. A month! But no, he wanted to be like that. So I was kind of like, ugh, irritated. And... Whenever, whenever stuff like that happened, it just it just doesn't sit with me, and it makes me look at you like, can I really trust you? Or I hate people who don't have full confidence in themselves. Like, okay, the pet peeve of mine is uh, what else? I don't have that many pet peeves because it doesn't. I'm a very go to the fl- go with the flow kind of guy, but. Uh, <sighs> Hmm, what else? I can't, I hate people who are too happy. Like, it's never a problem to be happy with yourselves or the world. But if you just keep talking it over and over how happy you are or rub it in or, you know, um, very hard to explain how I feel about that. It's just like, okay, people who, who more like think they're all that, they piss me off. Like, they think they're untouchable. Those people piss me off the most because, one, honey, you're human, just like me. Two, don't, don't ever think you're better than me, ever. Because no one's better than anybody. We're all our own person. No one is equal to us because we're our own person. So, you know, you can never judge a person being like, oh, well, why should you be like me? Well, I'm not you. I'm me. I'm a different person. Because, you know, 
twins are their own people too, you know. Different personalities, different, or they can be almost simultaneously, I mean, they can be almost similar in every possible way. But sometimes that's not the case, and you have to accept that. But some people don't, and then, you know, they get all mad and, you know, angry about it, and it's irritating. You know, they're like, oh, um, I'm not making sense on this. Oh, my God, I'm losing my train of thought. I'm like, my brain's telling me one thing, and my mind is saying, I need to eat. My mouth is just running amok. Let's scratch all that. Okay, uh, I forget about the twins. That was a dumb, dumb analogy to bring up. Um, okay, so I think I'm done with the pet peeves because I don't really hate a lot of things. But there is a pet peeve about my sister I hate is every time she comes home, she's like, I need food. Like, she comes and demands food. Or whenever I can't find my charger in the house, oh my God, I get pissed. Or uh, someone's always blaming one or the other. Like, oh, he had it or she had it or, oh, you had it. I'm like, me? I'm asking for it. I mean, siblings are a pain. Like, I'm going to make a podcast about my siblings eventually, just not today. Because I'm just tired and I just want to eat. So I think I'm done rambling and ranting for the day, guys. Um, If you did not catch all of that, I'm sorry. If you caught some of it, that's great. If you catch all of it, then uh, tell me your ways. But anyways, thank you for hearing me out. I hope you guys have a great day. And, you know, if you're driving or you're listening or you're walking or what the heck are you doing to possibly hear this podcast, I appreciate you and I love you guys. And, you know, remember to like, subscribe, turn on notifications, and just, you know, Watch out for my next one, and I'm going to try to be more active now because since I have more free time, I should be able to dedicate myself more to the channel and to my Instagram page because, you know what, followers are very important people, and I want their attention. So, you know, if you guys help me out, that'd be great. Okay, well, um, remember, tell your friends to subscribe, to like, and watch the videos, read, and if you guys want me to talk about more stuff, let me know. Um, Comments below would be great. And, you know, uh, I think that's all for me. Well, thank you guys for listening to EEC Talks. Uh, Until next time, I'm Mr. C, and I'm signing off. Catch you later.